Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk more about the Beano Boost e-bike that I have. This is the Beano Boost Performance Sport. So it has the Performance Sport Bosch motor in it. Um, I believe this motor puts out up to 250 kilowatts. Is that how you measure the power? It says somewhere on here. Yeah. Oh, 250 watts, not kilowatts, right? Um, and it's a 400 uh, watt hour battery. So <laughs> figuring out all these watts and watt hours and kilowatt hours and all that stuff is challenging <laughs> if you're new to the whole e-bike thing, which I'm relatively new now. But I have learned a lot in just the short amount of time that I've had this bike. And so that's what I'm here to do is review this bike and let you know my thoughts on it. So as far as the bike itself, it's a kind of, um, it's not considered a long tail. It is a cargo bike. Long tails generally are longer. I think they call this like a mid or mid tail, something like that. I mean, there is all this terminology out there, hard to keep track of, but if you think of bikes that have like the extra cycle kit, let's think like a Surly Big Dummy or in the e-bike category, the Sur Surly Big Easy, that's considered a long tail and they're a bit longer than this bike. Um, but according to Bino, you can fit two of those child seats on here. I think it's Yep or something like that as a company. I don't have kids, so I don't plan to do that, but they say you could fit two of them on there. I would think it would be kind of tight, but it could be done. Um, but <clears throat> I did order the bigger bags to go on the sides. Um, those will come when they come. Uh, we're in the supply chain shortage, so sometimes things take a while. <laughs> okay, so this is a class three, which means it can get up to 28 miles per hour, but it is pedal assist only and that's an important designation there is no throttle on this bike they do make e-bikes with throttles so i did a video actually very recently as in i uploaded it today i actually filmed it a couple of days ago but it took me a while to get to uh, editing it and uploading it so this video is really going to come right after that one so that one if you want to know a little bit about the range i've been getting you can look at that one. I'll just cover it super quick. I've been getting probably around 45 to 50 miles of range on a charge, probably a little over 50. I just haven't run the battery completely dead. I get down to one bar and then I recharge it. But I could easily get 50 to 55 miles of range running in mostly eco mode. So what I'm actually going to talk about today, and I brought my GoPro and my helmet, is I'm going to ride the bike. I'm going to talk a little bit about something I've discovered, and I just do not see many people talking about it. And that's about this idea of torque, right? And what gear you should be in to maximize your torque. And not only that, it'll maximize your range. Now, keep in mind, that a lot of people that buy e-bikes are not super strong cyclists, which is what kind of makes e-bikes cool, right? Is you don't have to be super fit. If you have an e-bike, you can just cruise right along and enjoy biking and it is what it is. For me, I wouldn't say I'm super fit. I'm not an elite cyclist, but I'm definitely fit compared to the average cyclist. I'm more on the fit side. So I can actually get away with riding in eco mode most of this time and still put out my usual effort and go pretty fast. So I'm gonna get more range of doing that than a person that runs in tour or sport mode most of the time and then maybe only uses turbo occasionally. Um, I will be doing that test, turbo only, keeping it in turbo, see how fast I can ride to work, and how fast I can get back. I mostly want to do that because it's kind of a fun experiment, right? Let's see what you could do with the, the most power output, right? So I'm going to put my stuff on and go ride this and talk about kind of what gear I'm in and 
kind of how much torque I'm getting and all of that because that really matters if you want to maximize your range you want to make sure you're shifting and using your bike optimally so instead of me standing here babbling let me get on my bike start riding it hit some hills and stuff and I'll babble then <laughs> okay I do not know if you can actually see this screen um, on the GoPro but um, it is in eco mode and I'll just say what's on the screen um, it's actually displaying hmm. let's get it to display my current mileage okay <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm pedaling on pretty much flat right now and I'll hit some hills in a moment but what I want to talk about is if I look down and see my face I am in a, kind of like my third gear up from the hardest gear. This bike has 10 speeds on it. Um, so not a huge range, like it's not an 11 or 12 speed. Um, but in this gear, pedaling on flat, I'm just comfortable pedaling cadence and I'm going almost 12 miles per hour, 11.5 miles per hour. Um, and you know, that's a pretty, casual party pace especially on an e-bike so let me uh pick it up a little bit okay and now i'm doing about 15 miles per hour you might be able to hear more wind in the gopro so on and so forth uh, all right <laughs> so this is pretty much cruising in eco so one thing i want to point out and something i'm discovering is i'll turn around up here <clears throat> i'll just go left no reason to turn around then i have to cross the busy road again all right if i go into a harder gear and i push I do not get very much e-assist. I'm pushing really hard and I might be getting assistance, but it's not helping me all that much. So if you're riding and you want to accelerate quicker, you actually want to do it like you would on a normal bike. You want to start out in a lower gear, pedal up to speed, then shift into the next gear, pedal up to speed, shift into the next gear. So, I would like to kind of equate it to how a manual transmission on a car operates. You don't start your manual transmission in a harder gear. You start it in an easier gear, and then you go up through the gears. Well, what I've learned on an e-bike is by starting in an easier gear, I get up to speed much, much quicker because... I'm, I'm able to put more power into the system and then you add the E assist on top of it and the two combined get me up to speed quicker. So I'm going to start in not my easiest gear, but I'm going to start in an easier gear, All right? And I'm going to wait for this car to go around the corner here. All right, so I'm going to start from a pretty slow speed here, right? I'm gonna start pedaling and I feel lots of assist right now. Tons of assist and I'm able to pick up speed. I just got up to 21 miles per hour that quick. Pretty impressive. And I, I put in some effort, but I didn't put in a ton of effort. If I was to do that on my regular bike, I would have had to put in a lot more effort. So I cross this road up here and then we'll continue on to the next thing that I want to show you. Okay, now it's mostly flat and I'm in a harder gear, right? So you can see how slow my legs are moving. All right, now I'm going to push really hard and try to accelerate up to 20. Oh, I'm not getting, I don't feel much assist. I'm getting there. Almost. Oh, 
still going. I'm having to put in way more effort too. There we go. 21 miles per hour. Oh, and that was a lot more work on my part. Okay, so what is my point here? Well, my point is, and hopefully you can hear me if I'm in the wind now. I'm not going very fast right now. I'm going like eight miles per hour. My point here is that it's not unlike riding a normal bike. Just because you have e-assist doesn't mean you can just leave it in one gear and ride that way. I mean, you could do that if you wanted to, but it's not gonna be very efficient, neither on you or on the bike. <laughs> so for those of you that aren't your typical cyclist or you're not huge cyclists and you haven't, you just don't have all this experience in riding a bike. One thing you wanna learn if you have an e-bike and or, and or you're new to biking is how to use the gears. What I really like about this particular bike and most modern bikes nowadays with gears is their one-by systems. And one-by meaning you only have one set of gear shifters to deal with. Uh, unlike systems of, not, of the very recent past where you had a shifter on the left and a shifter on the right and you had to figure out which one to shift and blah blah blah. The one-by systems make learning how to shift really easy because you only have one set of gears to deal with and you can use the thumb, bigger thumb lever in this case to shift into your easier gear and then the other thumb or finger trigger whichever one the smaller lever on the shimano you can do it either way you can use your thumb or your index finger um that's what i like about the shimano is you can use them either way um so um that allows you to get into that lower gear so if i'm coming up to let's just pretend that this is a intersection where i need to stop up here and i come up to the intersection i want to downshift into an easier gear then come up to a stop once i can go in that easier gear i'm going to get that boost i'm shifting boost and look at me i'm already up to 16 miles per hour right like and that's only because i downshifted into an easier gear when i started going now of course i'm pedaling hard and fast you don't have to do that We'll do the same thing and I'll do a casual pedal. So come to a stop, wait till things are clear. I went into an easier gear. Now I'm just pedaling casually and I, the bike just surges forward. I get into the next gear, surges forward. Get the next gear surges forward. If you're in too high of a gear, you're not gonna get that surge and that assistance. Keep in mind, I'm talking about this. I'm only in that's to where I'm only in eco mode. I am not in any of the higher power modes. So that's what I talk about. If you want to maximize your range and you stay in eco mode and you utilize your gears, how you would normally do on a bike, you're going to get a lot more range out of your e-bike. If you're not downshifting into the easier gears to utilize, you know, that torque as I like to call it um, and that torque is twofold it's your ability to put more torque in combined with the electric motors ability and by doing that you're gonna get much more efficiency out of the bike and out of you <laughs> and <clears throat> so it's important to understand that so use your gears downshift when you're going slower speeds and then as you pick up the speed, shift into the harder gears and you're gonna get more use out of your battery, more use out of your motors, assistance ability, so on and so forth. Now, the reason why I took this route <laughs> is right ahead of me up there is probably one of the bigger hills in the neighborhood and <laughs> they got their car started. <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> um, the I'm, I'm already on a little bit of an incline um but that hill up there is is super steep so another way to conserve your battery is i have a couple of options here 
I could go and punch this up into turbo mode and I get all this assist and I can pound up the hill. As a matter of fact, let's just do it. Turbo mode. Down. It's a steep hill. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Even in turbo mode, I had to downshift into easier gears. That's how steep that hill is. Yeah, and I had to work. But let's use eco mode and I'll show you. So when I did turbo mode there, I maintained about 13, 14 miles per hour up the hill on my normal bike. I do about five or six miles per hour, so pretty big difference. Okay, so I can guarantee you that doing that turbo up the hill just used a ton of battery energy. And sure, I was able to maintain a higher speed, but it was pretty wasteful. And it's actually unnecessary if you actually use your gear. To get this fire truck to go by <laughs> she's what did i say about living in the city it's just the... i'm in the neighborhood it's just always busy <laughs> all right <laughs> although i do have to say a plane hasn't flown over yet <laughs> all right all jokes aside let's do this i'm actually in too hard of a gear so i'm gonna downshift a couple turn around <clears throat> And I'll show you how I'll go up this hill in, in eco mode. So when I'm doing this, it's not about being in a hurry. It's about efficiency, right? And getting up the hill. So now I'm in the hill, I'm in eco mode. It's starting to get challenging. So I downshift, downshift some more, pedal a little faster, 10 miles per hour, right up the hill piece of cake I'm actually less winded <laughs> there than I was using turbo so granted I could have used turbo downshifted and pedaled in a much easier way and it would have been effective so <laughs> it really just has to do with how much effort you want to put in okay now that I've done a few demonstrations riding the bike Let's talk about it a little bit. The primary thing I want to talk about is getting into that maximum torque band. Before I show you on the bike, I want to compare it to driving a manual transmission automobile. So if you've never done that, then you're not going to have any idea what I'm talking about. But if you have, um, you can follow along and understand it. So uh, automobile engine, has a certain torque band. And so I, my Toyota Tacoma is actually a manual transmission, believe it or not. They still make them, they still sell them with manuals and I love it. But what you wanna do when you're driving a manual transmission is when you come to a complete stop, you wanna shift into first gear, the easiest gear. And the reason you wanna do that is the engine has a certain amount of torque within a certain range of RPM, right? And so you gotta get into that lowest gear to get the engine to get into high enough RPM to get into what's called that torque band. My Tacoma, it's a little higher than most like smaller four cylinder cars, but it really doesn't start to put out a lot of torque until you're up to like 3,500, 4,000 RPM and up to about six. It kicks in there. Um, it kind of bogs almost below that if I'm trying to accelerate quick. Um, but I've driven cars where the torque band is uh, lower. So right around three, you know, 2,500 or three grand, you can start to feel that power kick in. So either way, there is a torque band and you wanna be in that torque band when you're trying to get optimum performance out of the motor. So that's why you shift into first gear because you're starting from zero miles per hour. And then as you drive, you shift into the next gear and then your RPMs drop and then get right into that optimum torque band and you get in your next gear and if your performance driving and I've done a lot of that I used to race autocross um, I've driven Corvettes Camaros um, 
Nissan GTR, although that had paddle shifters. Um, a little different, no clutch. But uh, I have quite a bit of experience in performance driving and you wanna be up in those higher RPMs where you're maximizing the torque of the motor. All right, so why am I talking about cars when we're talking about an e-bike? Well, because this e-assist works much in the same way. It's a little different and I'll explain that. What makes it a little different is that you're putting in your energy combined with the assistance from the motor. That's why it's called e-assist. Um, if I had a throttle on here, you could just push the throttle and the motor would do all the work. If you do get a throttle e-bike, use the throttle knowing that you're going to use a lot more battery. The more efficient way to use an e-bike is to pedal and use pedal assist. So you're putting in some of your own energy combined with the electric motor. So um, I'm not a huge fan of the throttle e-bikes they just you know i'm a cyclist so that doesn't make sense to me but i see why people do that so anyway on this kind of bike you're going to get assistance from the motor and i'm going to be putting assistance in here and then to get maximize my torque when i come to a stop which i actually didn't do here <laughs> when i stopped is you want to shift into an easier gear so up in these top three here, you probably don't want to go in the biggest ring, but probably the third one down or whatever when you come to a stop. Um, and so you get into your easier gear and then that way when you start, like the light turns green or if you stop at a stop center for whatever reason you stopped, you're going to feel that boost. You'll literally feel the motor kicking in as you pedal and the bike will surge forward and then you shift it as I demonstrated when I was riding around. It's pretty impressive. If you're in a harder gear and you start pedaling from a stop, you're not gonna feel much of any assist and you're gonna have to put in a lot of effort just like you would on a regular bike if you start out in a harder gear. It's no different on the e-bike. So you basically treat an e-bike like you do a normal bike and get into that easier gear. And then as you pick up speed, shift into the appropriate gear to get that appropriate amount of cadence and that appropriate amount of effort that you're putting in combined with the e-assist motor and then you'll be able to maintain speeds so that's really it in a nutshell is you know knowing how to use the gears and if you're not so familiar or not very good at shifting gears on a bike learn how to do that and it's much easier now when you just have one set of shifters and gears and you don't have them ones on the front and shifters over here you just have the one set, right? So if you want the most range out of your battery, keep your bike in eco and only use your other boosted assist levels when you really need them to climb a hill or something like that. Or if you have a lot of cargo on your bike, things like that. Also know that adding cargo, adding more weight, um, if you're hauling heavier loads, towing a trailer maybe, which, are options for e-bikes just know that you're gonna lose a lot of range doing that um, and that's kind of the thing if you're a heavier person if you weigh you know over 200 pounds 250 300 pounds and you're on an e-bike you're gonna get about a lot less range than what the manufacturer uh, says you can get because it's pulling around a lot more weight and working the motor a lot harder hopefully <laughs> that's some incentive to use the e-assist to help you get in better shape and lose some weight yeah, i don't know i don't know what your goals are but if those are your goals an e-bike is actually a really good way to get there right so um so there you have it all kind of about the efficiency of how you would ride the bike so if you own an e-bike and you're not really getting the efficiency numbers you're expecting and you're within the normal weight range um Part of the reason why is you might not be utilizing it as efficiently as you could. And, you know, it's all going to depend on your fitness level, things like that. Like I said, I'm a pretty fit rider. And so I can get away with being in eco mode and I can push a little harder myself and I get the benefit of the e-assist. And by doing that, I can save a lot more battery. So I will be able to get more range out of the battery than say somebody that's not at my fitness level and that needs to use the e-assist more. 
But I hope that all kind of makes sense of why these ranges may vary quite a bit per person and per uh, usage level. And part of that is going to have to do with the terrain you're riding too, because if you're in really hilly terrain, you're not going to get as much range out of it because you're going to have to work the motor to climb hills more. But you might actually be able to offset that if you're climbing and then also descending. So it really depends on the terrain that you're in. Cool. I really appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.